If you're looking to satisfy that sweet tooth, there's a candy shop in West Charlotte where the walls are lined with lollipops and baskets of fireballs. Below, you'll find airheads by the box and now and laters in every flavor. It's all inside Scooter Snacks and More, which sits on the corner of the City West Common Strip Mall on West Boulevard. Owners say they offer a traditional candy store experience with a new urban twist. Two of the strawberry. Lamont and Christina George reign over this real life candy land where you can find old school favorites like candy cigarettes, Mary Jane's, and Boston baked beans. The kids are overwhelmed, the adults are excited because they can relate to candy cigarettes, you know, squirrel nuts long boys, things that they haven't had or their grandparents had. If you crave a savory snack, grab a pickle, nachos, or something more filling, like a hot dog or pizza. We go to four different markets and um, get different things and bring it back. St. Louis, Indianapolis, Nashville, Atlanta. St. Louis, Missouri is home to the original Scooter Snacks and More, named after Lamont's friend and partner, Scooter. When the couple moved to Charlotte five years ago, they opened a second location in the city's historic West End. The neighborhood is lined with mom and pop shops, shuttered storefronts, and empty buildings. But Christina says it fit their vision. Well, actually, we looked at some of the top 10 worst neighborhoods in Charlotte uh, because we wanted to make sure that we could be a positive influence and be a role model to the neighborhood. Just like the Georges, Brianna and Davidson moved to Charlotte from St. Louis. She says when she walked into scooters for the first time, she couldn't believe her eyes. The ripplets and all that stuff, and I'm like, wow, I thought we would have to be, we would have to be in St. Louis to get this. Jay Cunningham says he often stops by for a snack, and sometimes he brings son Messiah to pick out a special treat. Peering through the glass counter, Messiah finds his favorite gummy candy. Cunningham says candy isn't the only reason he brings his son to scooters. He says the Georges are role models who've helped revitalize City West Commons. Here you go, young man. Thank you. They treat customers like family. I was going in between jobs. He let me come here and I worked here for, I think, two, three months. When Scooters first opened, this area was an office. The Georges then decided to turn it into an event space, but the pandemic hit and parties were put on hold. So the Georges found a creative way to bring customers in and serve the community. The space became a tutoring area and a safe place for neighborhood children to go. Anytime I can have a place that a kid can be safe and a parent can call the store phone and say, is my kid there? Can you tell them to get on home? I can, and I'm okay and they know me. I, I mean, I feel like we have accomplished something. Like so many entrepreneurs, the Georges had a hard time keeping the store afloat during the pandemic which not only took a toll on small business, but the candy industry as a whole. So many different places that does sell candy has went out of business. A lot of the different old, old school manufacturers couldn't keep up with, the, uh, with, the, with COVID. Businesses across the country are still trying to bounce back from the pandemic's impact. Statistics show that black owned businesses were among the hardest hit. Dr. Shante Williams, president of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Black Chamber of Commerce says, it was a tough lesson learned. I think more people thought they might have been prepared than really were. Uh, and now I see business owners that really know their stuff and they are really well equipped to weather the next storm. CMBCC's mission is to be the hub of information and resources for black owned businesses throughout the Charlotte metro area. And we preach finances, 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 meaning make sure that your business credit score is good, make sure that you have, you, you're up to date, you're not just relying on your accountant or someone else to do the work that you know your numbers. William says pre-COVID, the chamber largely focused on education. Post-COVID, the organization is doing more direct financing. I am seeing a lot of business owners um, not only seeking investment or capital into their business, but figuring, trying to figure out um, how they can become investors. The Georges are shining examples of this new trend of minority small business owners turned entrepreneurs. Three years ago, the duo purchased Ideal Barbershop, located just steps away from the candy store. Henry Carter has been cutting hair for close to 40 years. He spent the last four at Ideal. He says when the Georges bought the barber shop, they made a lot of changes. Pretty much everything you see in here is different from when I came, really. Um, the, the chairs, the, um, the, the, the paint, the, 
the designs on the wall. COVID-19 was hard on Carter and his fellow barbers, especially when they had to close up shop for months and couldn't work. They're back to normal hours now, but continue to play it safe by wearing masks and spacing out clients. It's a lot better than it was when we when, when we started because a lot of people was afraid to um, come out. but. Um, since the, the vaccine, um, a lot more of the older clients um, have started coming back to the barbershop. Meantime, the Georges have managed to find balance in their personal and professional partnership. Christina handles day-to-day -day operations for scooters, while Lamont pursues new opportunities. He encourages others who dream of starting a business to take the leap. Make it a unique product and make it your own, and people will really come support you. For Carolina Impact, I'm Rochelle Metzger. We hope you enjoyed the story. If you don't want to miss any more great stories about the Charlotte region, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.